All right, this is the last hour of physics 1Z for October 4th, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to solve a couple of these problems, and then uh, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to give you a few to solve yourself. And we'll talk about the solutions. So the way you do these problems are you basically take your network. All right, so you've got this setup right here. And you just reduce it down step by step, one step at a time, into individual capacitor networks. And it's actually important that you do it step by step for some of the problems. And I'll show you, you're gonna see why here in a second. So, right, do I need to zoom in farther? Is that why? Yeah, I do. The size of my pen felt kind of small. Okay, I made these too big. Oops. Oh no. Where did we go? So we're going to break this down one at a time. So this circuit is going to be reduced down into a circuit where we take I really apologize. Drawing these things uh, freehand is always going to look kind of bad, but I should be using a straight uh, a straight edge to make them look better. But okay. So the goal here is to say this capacitor here. So this is going to stay three. This is going to stay 11. This one is going to stay 9. Forgive me if I don't write units on all of these, uh, even though I probably should. So we have a 3, an 11, and a 9, right? The question is, what happens to the 12 and the 6? So you all tell me, what's the equivalent capacitance if I have a 6 and a 12, and they are in series? Series, we use this equation. And parallel, we just sum them. Okay, you all got four. Okay, so this is parallel. All right, so I kinda need to move my diagram down a little bit more too. Sorry, I should put this on the screen together. Okay, so nine, 11, three, you all are saying you get four here. Let's see if that's true. What you should have done is you should have taken one sixth plus one twelfth and then taking that to the negative one power. Uh, let's see, a sixth is like two twelfths. So this is like three twelfths to the negative one, which is equal to four. So that's where the four came from here. Good job. The next step will be that we take our same setup and we reduce it down again. Now our reduction is gonna be of the three capacitors here that are in parallel. And those will reduce down to just one capacitor. And then we'll have the other nine farad capacitor still here. So this is the nine. Right now, to do this one, all we have to do is three plus eleven plus four. Right, so four plus five is fifteen. Fifteen plus three is eighteen. Right, and then we reduce it down again, and we're going to have our final answer right here for the equivalent capacitance. This one is going to be given by taking these two, and clearly here because they're in series, we have to do one over nine plus one over eighteen to the negative one. If we do that, what are you going to get? 1 over 9 is like, I think you're going to get 6. Is that right? It's pretty easy, but I, I have to emphasize that you, you want to do the steps, right? It's like 1, 2, 3 steps in this case. And... Uh, You should always add straight ahead first. What do you mean? Can you clarify? What I would say is that you just kind of combine which ones you can. And in this case, these two seem like they're kind of, they could be combined. So we just start off with those. I don't know if that helps. Right. Right. You have to be careful when you're combining these things together that you don't... Like, I can't combine the 9 and the 11, for example. You got to make sure that when you add them together, you're not, like, kind of crossing over any branch points like this or like this. You don't want to... You know, I don't want to treat the 9, the 6, and the 12 as if they're in series. 
because they're, they're technically not, because there's these other things going on here. Okay, no problem. All right, let's look at a problem that is a little bit, um, has a little bit more to it. So this problem, we have the circuit that's seen here. So you've got point A and point B, and then you've got a two, a six, an eight, a three, a one, and a four. All of these are gonna be in microfarads. It says, find the equivalent capacitance between points A and B in the figure shown. All values are in microfarads. And then if a potential difference of 120 volts is applied between A and B, what's the charge on each capacitor? This is where you almost have to have a diagram to make this work out, to, to be able to solve the second part. All right, so let's go. So we've got these capacitors. They're set up like this, right? I guess I should give you a second to even look at it. What, why, don't, why don't I give you two minutes? God, two minutes seems like such a long time. Uh, how about I give you a minute and a half and you, you try to see if you can find the equivalent capacitance. Okay, a minute and a half, go. Try to find the equivalent capacitance, just part A. You do not need to put an answer in the chat, but you are welcome to ask questions. No, don't, don't put your answer in there. D don't worry about those circles. Sorry, uh, they don't they don't mean anything. The circles are just indicating that you should combine those together first. That's what that's what that's saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's almost two minutes. So, assume you had enough time to at least consider the problem, which is all I care. If you didn't solve it, it's okay. I, I didn't expect you to solve it that quickly. Although if you if you really do if you if you came to class prepared you probably can. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 4, right? We'll leave that one there. And then we're going to combine together these two. Well, it's a 3 and a 1 and these are How are they connected? Is that parallel or series? This is parallel, right? So we're going to combine them together. 3 and 1 we combine together to be 4 because that's how you combine parallel capacitors. Down here, six and two will combine to become eight. Okay, now we're gonna need two more steps. Now we're gonna reduce this down and we're just gonna do the series ones on top. I know that it looks like the whole thing is in parallel, but it's not. You have two series on top and you have two series on bottom that we have to combine, like this. Uh, four and four is gonna be a quarter plus a quarter to the negative one power, which will be two. And do the same thing, an eighth plus an eighth, and you'll get four. And then we combine these together, you get an answer of, what did you all get? Did anyone get this? Do anyone get six? Do you guys agree? Good. That part's easy. Okay, now for the hard part. The hard part is, if a potential difference of delta V equal to 120 volts is applied between points A and B, what's the charge on these capacitors? So the question is, suppose that I put a battery in here, and I tell you that it has a potential difference of 120 volts. What is the charge on each capacitor? Now, I'm sure there's more than one way to do this, but my method works every single time. And I think it's the simplest way to do it. We're going to work backwards. Part B, we're going to work backwards. So we're going to start from the end, where we know that these two points are still point A and point B. 
which means that the delta V, the potential difference across this equivalent capacitance of six microfarads is also 120 volts, okay? Now what we can do with this, if we want to, is we can now find how much charge there is on the capacitor by using that equation, right? Since charge is equal to capacitance times potential difference, I can see pretty easily here that if I take six times 120, I'm gonna get, uh, what is it, 720? 720 microcoulombs of charge. That's hard to read, I apologize. 720 mu C, can you all see that? Take delta V, multiply by C, that means that's the amount of charge Q that's contained on this object, right? All right. But they didn't ask us to find the total charge. We have to find the charge on each capacitor. So we need to use this information to move back one step. And this is where you have to think about, was it parallel or series? So here, these two objects are in parallel, right? And just like with the last part, they're connected up to 120 volts device, right? So if the potential difference on this one on the right was 120 volts, and these are connected in parallel, then what's the potential difference on the two microfarad device going to be? What's delta V up here going to be? Also 120. Yep, both objects are going to have the same potential difference. I'll continue to use a different color here. So for this one, we know delta V is equal to 120. And for this one, we also know, uh, I don't know where to write it, delta V is, ugh, I'll write it up here, delta V is 120. What can we use that information to tell us? What I like to do is to just basically use this at every, at every step to make sure I solve for anything that I need to solve for, okay? So if I know delta V is 120 volts and the capacitance is two microfarads, right? This is, this is capacitance right here. What would the charge on this one be? Two forty two times one twenty right so this is two forty microcoulomb. What about this one? Four times one twenty is four eighty right. That should have been I'm so sorry God I hate when I make mistakes. Sorry that should have been mu f and then charge is measured in microcoulombs. Okay, does four eighty plus one two forty equal one hundred seven hundred twenty? It does right. That's good. Can always use that to check our work. Now we go back another step. We're still solving part B. So now what we have to do, this part I guess is a little bit less obvious, is I have to think about this point and this point are the same thing as this point and this point, right? And these two are in series and they combine together to produce this one, right? So what do we know? Can we say that the voltage across each of these is gonna be 120? Can we say the charge of each of these is gonna be 240 microcoulombs? What can we say? One of them must be true. We have to be able to use this information somehow to get back to the previous step. So what is gonna be the same? The charge is 240. And how did you know that, Patrick? When you have a series combination of capacitors, each element has the same charge. Okay, so series, same charge, parallel, same voltage. All right, so, Going from the two back to these two fours, we know that both of these have a charge. I'll keep using green for charge. Both of these have a charge that's equal to 240 microcoulombs. This one, oh, I'll do that thing with a four again. Four, zero. This one's gonna also be a charge of two, four, zero microcoulombs. Down here on these two eight microfarad devices, we know that they're in series, which means they have the same charge as this one. So this has a charge of 480 microcoulombs, and this has a charge of 480 microcoulombs. Now we're kind of almost done because we actually found the charge on this one. We found the charge on this one, right? So we just need to find the charge on these two here. Now, the next thing we do after we've done these is notice, okay, I have a capacitance like this is my capacitance here, this is my capacitance here, and I have a charge, so what can I solve for? 
we can solve for the voltage. We can use this equation again. So now it's delta V, I'll write it in a different way. Delta V is equal to Q over C. So if I take Q and I divide by C, what's delta V on this one gonna be? Sixty, yeah, two forty. Okay, so sixty volts here. It turns out to be the case that this one's also sixty, just because it has the same capacitance. That's, but you'll notice that they don't have the same voltage as this one, but the sum is the same, right? Sixty plus sixty is equal to one hundred twenty. Another thing that we can check. When I come down to here, what's the potential difference across these going to be? Well, I think it's also going to be sixty because four eighty divided by eight is sixty. Four eighty divided by eight is sixty. They both have micro in them, so in case you're wondering about that, right? Um, this is microfarads, microfarads. So if I take micro divided by micro, the micros cancel, right? Okay, now for the final step. I might have to draw my own picture here because I don't, th I don't think I can fit everything on this picture. So we'll, we'll redraw the original diagram. Oh, this is gonna look so bad, but what can we do? I know this is off the screen. I, I'll move it here in a second. I just want to continue, finish the drawing, then I'll move it. I didn't intend for it to go off screen. It just kind of did. Okay, let's shift this over to the right. Now, now we're going from that picture down to here. So we went, right? Just we started from the end. We went back. We filled in all our data, and now we're coming back to here. So we've got. Up here, we've got, we don't need to deal with this one. We've already done it. So we'll just write the other ones. This is one microfarad. This is three microfarad. And then we did that one. This one is six. And this one's two. Okay, so let's look at this capacitor right here. This one basically goes back to these, right? These two, the three and the one, right? What is going to be the same when I go from the four microfarad capacitor back to this three and one right here? Just looking at this one again. What's going to be the same? Voltage. voltage. Thank you. That's right. Yep, voltage. So on this one, I know they're parallel, so they must have the same voltage as this guy right here, 60 volts. So this is going to be 60 volts. This is going to be 60 volts. We'll, we'll fill in the charge here in a second. We can also say the same thing here. This is 60 volts. This was 8 microfarads, so this is going to be 60 volts here. This one's going to be 60 volts here. And now to find the final charges, we just multiply them, right? So for charge, on this one, it's 60 times 1, which is 60 microcoulomb. For this one, it's 60 times 3, which is 180 microcoulomb. Is that right? 180 mu C. 60 times 6, which is 360 mu C here and 60 times 2, which is 120 mu C here, okay? And to fill out the ones that we had from before, we knew that this one here was 480, and we knew that this one here was 240, right? And there, we've, we've solved the problem. It's kind of tedious. I'm not going to lie. It's obviously really tedious, but it's like an algorithm. You kind of, you know, just to follow back through what the algorithm is, it's like, you start by taking your system and you draw four diagrams or as many diagrams as you need until you've reduced the system down to just one capacitor. This can't always be done, by the way, but with the problems you're given, it will be able to be done. Once you've gotten this, you fill out this data here, QVC, and then you think about step by step what you did. So going from here to here, it was parallel, and we know that for parallel, the voltages have to be the same. So we took this 120 volts and we basically wrote it right there and we wrote it right there. We already knew the capacitance, which means that since we're working with this equation, Q equal to C times delta V, since we're using this equation right here, we basically just fill in whatever piece of information is missing. There will always only be one piece of information that's missing. That's it, right? We got to the end right here. We were given 120 volts. We, we, we calculated this, so the only unknown was Q. We went back to here. We had 120 volts from here. And we had two microfarads from the picture, so the unknown was this one right here, which we solved for, right? And then we just repeat that process the whole time through, solving for Q, C, and V for everything. Um, again, it's tedious, but it's also kind of easy in a weird way. 
as you do more of this stuff, you just you'll get good at this. So yeah. Worth getting good at, you'll definitely have some kind of question on your next exam that's gonna involve doing stuff like this, so definitely worth learning how to do. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Mmm, that is a mistake. Thank you for noticing that. This should have been microcoulombs. This should have been microcoulombs. So sorry. We'll put it in a different color. That's mu C and that's mu C. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. Next thing to talk about is the energy stored in capacitors. So consider the following system. I give you a capacitor. I tell you it has capacitance C. I connect it up to a battery. We put a switch into our system. So we'll leave an opening here and we'll go like this. And I have a battery. The battery has potential difference delta V. And we have a switch right here. Now we throw the switch down at T equal to zero when the capacitor is uncharged. And what we'd like to understand is, after some time has passed and the switch has been closed, so our switch is closed, but before the capacitor is fully charged, let's say that at some moment in time, this capacitor carries a charge that I call Q. And it's not fully charged. Okay, so in this state, it's not fully charged. So it's still, I'll just say it's still charging up. The capacitor is charging up, okay? And what I want to think about is, suppose that I think about, oh, and we'll say this is the positive side, this is the negative side. So this is plus Q, and this side would have minus Q on this side. We think about a piece of charge, and we think about the work needed to get that charge onto the plate, okay? We're going to call the charge DQ, and we ask the question, what is the work needed A small to move a small amount of charge DQ onto the positive plate. And this will be a positive DQ that we're adding to it. How much work is needed? I would say that the work should be somehow related to this expression. Q times delta V. And if I have a capacitor that has a charge Q, I know that delta V is equal to Q over C. That will give me the kind of instantaneous potential difference on the plates. And in this case, to be clear about what we're doing here, the charge that we're trying to move on here, I'm calling DQ. So if I put those together, and then the, the work here is going to be a small amount of work to push the tiny little charge. So we say dw then is equal to dq, and then there's a q over c right here. And what we do is we're just gonna integrate from zero up to the final charge q, big Q. That's gonna give us the total work needed. If I integrate this, it's q dq. What I'm gonna get is q squared over two c, using the power rule. We need to evaluate this from zero to q which means we're going to get that the work needed is equal to capital Q, the total charge when it's fully charged over 2C. And this is actually also equal to the energy stored in the capacitor. If it takes that much work to fill the capacitor up, then that must be how much energy is actually stored inside of it. Wow, we got through that really fast. The question is, did anyone understand what I just did? I want to get to these other problems, but I wanted to, to do this real quick. Uh, the, the important thing to understand is that you can use that equation right there to calculate how much energy there is in a capacitor. So for example, if I have a capacitor that has a charge, let's say of three microcoulombs, and it has a capacitance of five microfarads, then we can find the energy stored 
yeah, any capacitor that has a charge Q, you can find its energy by taking the charge squared and dividing by two C. That's all. That's all that it means. Right. This is the. This is this is energy. We use U for energy. It's a type of potential energy. Is that's why we use U. So U in this case would be three microcoulombs squared divided by two times five microfarads. The one thing you've got to be careful with here is you do have to convert these because the units will not work out if you don't convert them. So the potential, sorry, the potential energy stored in the capacitor is going to be three times 10 to the negative six whole squared divided by, looks like two times five is 10. It's going to be 10 times 10 to the negative six. So we end up getting the energy stored is going to be about nine over 10 times 10 to the negative six. I think it's going to be 0 0.9 times 10 to the minus 6 joules, which would be about, what, 0 0.9 microjoules? Doesn't seem like much energy. And it's not, but I guess it depends on, the how, you know, how you're going to use it. Does that make sense? Pretty easy formula to use. Q squared over 2C. The other thing we can do with it is we can say that if we combine the two formulas that we know so far together, which is this one, with the energy equation, then what we get is um, plugging in for Q, you're going to get C squared delta V squared over 2C one of the c's will cancel, and so you're gonna get one half c times delta v whole squared. Alternatively, we could have eliminated the capacitance, and I'll just let you prove that if you do that, you're gonna get the energy stored in the capacitor is also given by one half q times delta v. You can kind of see it here, because if this is c times delta v squared, one c delta v is a q, so then you can kind of see how you get that equation there. But this, this, and then obviously this one that we derived. Those are three different expressions for the energy stored in the capacitor. But, um, you know, they're all the same. Quite commonly, you're going to know what all three values are because they're all related to each other. Does everyone understand? Anyone have any questions? No questions? Okay, then the last thing that I want you all to do for tonight, today, we have about 12 minutes left. It's not much time, but probably just enough to solve one problem. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you solve the problem. Um, we did that one. Which one of these do you wanna do? I'll put them both down here. You can choose for yourself which one you want to do. I kind of want you all to try number 27, though. Thing is, sometimes these problems get a little tricky because of the way they're drawn. And here's two examples, and I wanted to make sure that you give them a shot. So rest of the class, all I want you to do is to try to solve these problems. Um, the first one, find the equivalent capacitance of this one, and then find the equivalent capacitance of this one. I will make it bigger so that you can see it. Oh, I said this is what we we're going to do, but then I just realized there's one other thing I got to show you first. This will not take long. This is the whole point of pulling up this one. All right. Two things to show you. All right, two things to show you. First of all, here is uh, a system. We have a capacitor, just like we did before. Here's the plates. The difference is that I have something that I can place in between them here, okay? The material says that it's custom and it has a dielectric constant. We have not talked about what this means. I just want to show you that if we place something inside of here, let's use paper. If we place something inside of here, Will this show capacitance? There it goes. 
Watch what happens to the capacitance right here and what happens to the charges on the plate when I put the paper inside. The capacitance is three times 10 to the negative 13 now. And when I pull it out, it's 0 0.09 times 10 to the negative 12. Wait, did it get smaller? The capacitance went down. Okay, so the capacitance went down, but the charge on the plates went up, right? Can you see that? You can even see that if it's offset by a little bit, that the plate part where, you know, there's, where it's not quite touching is, um, yeah. So putting something inside of here can change capacitance. Changing what it's made of changes capacitance. So just something to keep in mind. We'll talk more about this next time. What I really want to do is look at the multiple capacitors. Now, can I make this bigger? Is it going to let me zoom in and out? No, it won't. This is all we got. So here's what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to have, let's say, three in series. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, well, maybe we do two first. We'll probably start with two and then we'll, we'll expand it. What I want to do is I want to have uh, this one be double the capacitance. And can I get a uh, voltmeter? I can. Cool. I'll pull two voltmeters out of here. So I guess what I want you to try to predict here for me, this is something that I would do as a demo. We probably still will do it as a demo. Is there only one voltmeter? That's too bad. So we have 1.5 volts right here, right? 1.5 volts. What do you think the readings will be on each of these capacitors when I take the reading? Does that make sense? I know that I've got a total of 1.5 volts between these two points, right? What am I gonna get if I put if I put these around my capacitors. So I'm gonna put one right here, and if I take this black node and I put it on top of this one here, what am I gonna get? Am I gonna get exactly 1.5, something less than 1.5? What do you think? What's the potential difference across this one gonna be? Now you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, less than 1.5, right? Okay, let's see what we get. Well, let's not see what we get. I want you to try to predict this. So if this has a capacitance of one microfarad, right? This has a capacitance of two, it's, it's not microfarads, it's one time, whatever. This is one and this is two, okay? The number is one times 10 to the negative 13, the number here is two times 10 to the negative 13. The point is that this one is double the size of this. Can you all tell me what the voltage across each of these is going to be? Can you all figure that out? And as a hint, it's related to what we just did. See if you can figure it out. I'll give you a, I'll give you a minute or two. What is the voltage going to read on the top plate? What is the voltage going to read on the bottom plate? If you don't know what to do, just reduce them down to one capacitor to start with and go from there. Okay, I, I just, is that enough time? Maybe not. You need a little more time? I could ask, what's the equivalent capacitance? What do you get if you, what, what do you get for the equivalent capacitance here? 
2 thirds. Yep. 0. 0.667 times 10 to the negative, two, whatever. 2 thirds. <laughs> what can we use that piece of information to find? If, that, if the equivalent capacitance is 2 thirds, we can find Q. So what's Q? One, right? Technically one times 10 to the negative 14 coulombs. It doesn't matter. It's one, right? So if, if we say that there's one coulomb on this one and, one, and, it, and they're in series, right? Which means they have the same charge, right? That's important. So if this is one coulomb and this is one coulomb, right? Which one is going to, well, what's the, what's the voltage across the top one going to be then? If this has a, a capacitance of one, oh, sorry, yeah, a capacitance of one and a charge of one, it should be one volt, right? This one should have a voltage, and what will the other one read? You take one coulomb and you divide by two, one half is going to be half, right? So the prediction would be that the top one is one volt and the bottom one is half of a volt. Before we go to take the measurement, is that clear to everyone how we got through that? those steps, combine the two together into one, you get a capacitor that has a capacitance of two thirds. You take two thirds and you multiply by the voltage. You get one, that's our charge. Our charge is one in whatever units it happens to be. And then you take, see, that's exactly right, Daniel. Even without the calculations, it makes sense. That's the whole point of this, is you could probably have figured this out if you just used your brain. One volt right here, and then if we go down to the other one, we get half a volt. Remember that the negative sign is just because of the order that I put these in. It's not, it's not particularly meaningful. Because if I move this one here, and I move this one up here, it's still going to say one volt. But it'll become... Wait, it's not touching. Oops, there we go. There we go. So we found that this capacitor with the larger capacitance ends up having half a volt, while this one has one volt. And it's because, you know... If we look at our equation, where's it? Voltage is Q over C, right? Voltage is Q over C, they're gonna have the same charge. So if one has double the capacitance, right? It has to have half of the voltage. Let's see if you can figure out if I change this. The problem with this number is like 1.5 is, so I can't really, <laughs> I would like to be able to, to do this to where I could come up with numbers that will make sense to you, that you can do in your head. Um, oh, this only goes to three? So what if we do one and three? How is it gonna break up then? What's the total capacitance now gonna be? One third plus one, so it's gonna be three quarters. And now the math just isn't gonna work out as well. <laughs> which is too bad, but uh, um, I'm gonna set this up in the lab next time that you're all in lab and I'm gonna ask you the same question. Let's see if you can remember um, how it works out. Okay, uh, I feel like that's actually probably a good place to stop. What we'll do next time, I guess, is we'll just start from here. But you wanna, if you wanna do some homework, be prepped for the next lecture, which is not for a week, but whatever, then um, think about these problems and try to solve them and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the solutions. Okay, you wanna have any questions? That's it for today. Hope you all have a great night. I'll see you next time. We have lab this week. Please show up for lab. Can't miss labs. It's only the people from the first half of the class, though.